the deltas represent the instrument state changes from the previous state to this measurement state. So in this case, since we're going from the test plan reset idle, or essentially the, the global default values, or the idle state values of the tester, these are the only changes that it's making to move from that state to this one. This first test is unique too because it's the first measurement that happens after our disconnect settings and our connect sequence. So in this one there is a sequence that's happening so it's showing us that it was executing a connect sequence and here it's laying out um, those changes that happened during the sequence. So if I were to come over to connect sequence I could see from left to right that's executed top to bottom here. So it's going to be setting the device power 9 value, then the VCC1 value is being set, then there's a delay, and then there's these, these RF source 1 and source 2 RF state buttons are being set. And then this last part shows us the state changes that happen in this panel. So in this panel we're doing a current measurement of VCC1. So here it's actually showing us the settings that are happening. So, so device power 9 goes from being open to VCC1. So that's, you can see in the global defaults, we're setting device power 9 to be VCC1. It says we're then getting, we're configuring VCC1 to a value. So it started at 0 volts as its idle state value and it's switching it to 12 volts and we see in the globals we had to set that to 12. There's a sequence delay of, of 1000 microseconds or 1 millisecond. Um, so that's coming from our, our connect sequence where we, we told it we wanted to wait a certain amount of time. And then RF source 1 and RF source 2 are remaining off as we asked here, so it holds that here. And then there's a settle time, so in order for these changes to take effect and to be stable, there's a, a built-in 200 microsecond settling time. And then we have a measurement that happens, debt control current measurement, and that's this one here. So that gives you kind of a, an idea of, of a a simple straightforward measurement that's the first one that happens after our disconnect settings and connect sequence are executed. If we come down to our simple gain sweep, here again we can see the expected time that this first measurement is going to take and we can see the values that are changing in it. So again like we said there's a there's an A1 measurement that's happening and there's a B2 measurement that's happening and we're dividing that value and then we're saving it into this array called gain sweep. So we can see that reflected here. The very first thing it does is, is it switches over to B2, does that measurement. It's turning RF source 1 on. There's a settle time associated with those changes of about 100 microseconds. And then we go into the measurement. So the first thing it does is there's a user pause of 100 microseconds, so that's the pause we placed here, and then we do a receiver measurement of B2. So this is doing a, a sweep. You don't see the sweep values reflected here in the panel, but up in the section defaults here, we're sweeping the frequency from 1 gigahertz to 6 gigahertz at 6 points. So as we step through these, you can see those changes reflected here. So for the gain sweep, we did a B2 measurement first, then it changes the parameter from B2 to A1, and then it's going to do that measurement. And then here we can see the very next thing it does is now we're going to switch from 1 gigahertz frequency to 2 gigahertz and, and do our measurement again. So we can see that reflected here. So this first part is the receiver tracking our source and changing over so we can measure at 2 gigahertz now. We see our RF source 1 switches from 1 to 2 gigahertz. Its RF state remains on. There's a settle time associated with that. And then we do, after a 100 microsecond pause, we do another measurement. You can see it, it maintained the settings that it had for the B2 or A1. I think based on what we had in the last one, we're still measuring A1, but now we're doing it at 2 gigahertz. So the very next step is it's going to be doing the B2 measurement at 2 gigahertz. 
so on and so forth. So you can see the optimizer in the background trying to save us time, not switching between the B2 and A1s as it goes across frequency. And then when it gets to the end, it's going to execute our disconnect settings. So here we, we defined some values that we wanted it to be set in, and we defined the order in which we wanted that to happen. And so that's reflected here. It's telling us going from the last measurement states and our measurements to then our disconnect settings and getting ready for the next device to come in and doing measurements there. So again, the optimizer is, is is turning our RF states off, it's returning our, our DC supplies to idle or safe values for the next part, but then you can see it's returning us back to the start frequency for RF source 1 and for the receiver, and it's getting us set up again to do that A1 measurement for the next part that comes in at 1 gigahertz. So that's a simple example of the delta settings and kind of walking through the state machine relative to our code. If I were to come back now and, and maybe um, let's enable everything in this, in this uh, test section so you can get an idea. So now instead of just the one sweep, now I've got a bunch of different measurements that are happening within this test section. And um, if I wanted to see what the optimizer is going to do, because by default the optimizer is on, so I'm giving it free reign over the order in which it's going to execute this, the question you'd ask yourself as the programmer is, so what's going to happen first and then what happens next? We can get a look at that test plan with these sections active in it. So the delta settings from my previous compile are, are still listed here until I close this panel. I can leave this panel open if I want to compare it. But if I want to see the new delta settings for my test plan represented uh, with all of these active, I just go back up to options and display delta settings. And here now you can see there's quite a bit more going on and the order of it is being defined by our optimizer. So again, we can see our total test time here. But then within that, we can see in our RF test section the order in which the compiler is doing things here. So you can see that it's optimizing this to reduce the state changes. And so according to the optimizer, given the instruments that we have and the measurements we're asking it to do, the fastest order it comes up with, it says the first thing it needs to do is it needs to do an S parameter measurement, this two port S parameter measurement. So that's coming um, from this panel, followed by the noise figure. It's going to do several noise figure measurements there. Then it's going to return back to S parameters and then back to noise figure. And it does that for these sequences. So I'm we could walk through them if we if if you wanted to, but the idea is that it's doing this in the fastest order possible. But again, this just gives you a general idea of the delta settings and how they apply to the test plan. So that's a brief summary on the delta settings. There's, there's quite a few more features within here, but just to get you started on it and give you a general idea how the delta settings work and how it relates back to your test plan.